Due to a round of BYOB karaoke curry at the weekend, I am on the verge of losing my voice. So in the spirit of trying to make this video quick, I am gonna be talking about short books that I've really enjoyed. And these recs are a real mix. So I hope there's something for everyone there. Some are classics, some are very contemporary, some are magical realism, some are fiction, romance, I don't know. Have a watch, have a watch if that sounds like something you would enjoy. First up we have Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This is about a 36 year old Tokyo resident who has been working at the same convenience store since she was 18. She's a pretty weird gal and I mean weird with love. It's not explicitly said in the book but a lot of people talking about it and a lot of commentary around the book says that she is autistic or at least a lot of autistic people see themselves in our protagonist. She spends a lot of time observing the interactions of the people around her and working out how to mirror them um, and how to appear regular. She's really worked out the rules of the convenience store. She's really nailed down what people mean when they say certain things, how to behave um, in a very kind of step-by-step -step checklist way. But the moment she enters the real world where you don't have these rules, it's an unknown setting, um, she crumbles slightly and things start to go wrong. Specifically, the book looks at a period of her life where all her friends are kind of, and her family are trying to get her to fall in love and get her to find a husband. And she tries to do that and the result isn't crazy successful. Um, it's just quite fun, interesting commentary on like trying to fit in. Um, it's also a bit of a weird book. I really enjoyed the detail that it went into when describing the convenience store. I love supermarkets, like supermarkets in other countries especially. I always have such a good time on holiday visiting them. And so I really enjoyed that aspect, uh, describing her routine as someone who works there, um, describing the restocking process. It's hard to really explain this book. You've got to just give it a read. And because it's less than 200 pages, you have no excuse. Overall though, it's really well written and kind of easy to read um, and introduces a tale and a way of living that I wouldn't usually think about, um, which was pretty cool. The thing about doing a story like this in one sitting as well is that it really allows you to get into the protagonist's brain and really kind of get into the rhythm of the story um, and that I was grateful for. The Stranger by Albert Camus uh, in case you don't know, because I see this book everywhere, but in case you don't know, it's about a man who gets drawn into murdering someone for no apparent reason. Camus is obsessed with the idea that life has no purpose and that death is the only certainty and that whole way of thinking and that really comes through in this book. Uh, I think it's why it's so incredibly popular because it, it, despite it being short, it very clearly gets that thinking across. On one hand it's very philosophical and complex and strange but on another hand the sentences are really short and the vocabulary is very simple. It's a really really divisive book. A lot of people don't like it. Um, it is kind of boring. <laughs> is that, am I allowed to recommend a book that I say is kind of boring? Um, so you definitely have to be in the right state of mind for it. You have to be ready to churn up to churn through a classic but because it's just very unique uh and like a bit of a thinker like it makes you think and it's kind of short i would still i think you should still give it a go sula by tony morrison i loved this book i thought it was really really beautiful um and just moving it's about a very close-knit black community in the kind of early to mid 1900s it's mostly i would say about like female friendship, specifically black female friendship. They're very different people. Sula leaves and then comes back and is quite sort of like sexually liberated, pretty hard to pin down. Her friend Nell leads a very conventional life, never leaves the town, gets married. It's one of those books that sounds like it's not about that much, but it's just really gripping and thought-provoking. I also love books that are centered around gossipy communities. The Mothers by Britt Bennett kind of reminded me of it slightly. The gossipy community gossiping about 
people's behaviour as a fun angle because the vast gap between what people say happened and what actually happened and then as a reader you're kind of not necessarily sure what the truth is. This was my first Toni Morrison and I cannot believe that this book was so short. The impact that I feel as a result of it, it kind of feels like I read this novel. I wish it was a novel to be honest, I wish it was longer um, but it feels like I read a novel because the characters feel so real to me and I just there were so many quotable lines where I was like that is just a timeless timeless observation. People, Places, Things by Duncan Macmillan is about an actress called Emma who has found herself in rehab due to an alcohol and various other drugs addiction. She is a really unlikable character um, which is my first favourite thing about this book. It's actually a play and can I just say plays if you're looking for short reading material, plays are my favourite thing because they are short, obviously, but they also have a really fast pace to them. Anyway, Emma checks herself into rehab. Um, she's pretty resistant to the programme. It's got a little bit of humour in it. It's also quite moving, as you can imagine. And it's just a pretty interesting, like not too depressing tale about addiction. Um, though it is quite sad. The Death of Ivan Illich by Leo Tolstoy is, well, it was my first Tolstoy and it's less than 100 pages, I think it's 80 pages, uh, and it's basically about an old man who is a judge who's had a pretty chill life, hoodling along and just never considering death, and then he is given a terminal diagnosis and eventually dies. The book follows this process of dying, his feelings around death, how people respond to his illness, how he feels about how people respond to his illness. Um, it's widely considered one of the manuals on death. I think it's also just quite a magical short story because after I read it I found out that Tolstoy wrote it after a nine-year hiatus from not writing a single word of fiction after finishing Anna Karenina, which is what I'm reading currently. You can kind of tell <laughs> It's obviously quite intense and dark and it's not it's not that depressing. It is slightly depressing. Prima Face by Susie Miller is another play. I really like this play because it's a monologue about a barrister who is incredibly good at her job. Her main thing that she's super, super good at is defending people accused of sexual assault or accused of rape. And she's quite cocky, arrogant, a little bit abrasive. As with what I was saying earlier about plays, it is just very like rhythmic and witty and sharp. And everything is flipped on its head when she becomes a victim of this type of crime and she's really forced to like confront herself and how she approaches these things and also just the flaws in the legal system and how it deals with this stuff. And it's kind of an educational experience because Susie Miller was a barrister so the play is quite technical. Again, this play I would say that you get the most out of it if you read it in one sitting which is not hard because I think I read it in like an hour. Like I read it on one train journey. Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It's basically about a woman who finds out that her husband is cheating. She discovers these letters that he's writing to another woman. So that woman, he just found out her husband's doing that, writes to the husband of the woman that the husband is writing to. So it's like she writes to the other person that's being cheated on and the whole story is told through letters. Uh, and I enjoy that limitation because obviously it like forces the writer to be a bit creative with it. It's sort of a story about heartbreak but it's not a sad story. There are sad bits but it's quite an uplifting positive read somehow. The Picture of Dorian Gray is our next book. I love this. It's the story of a man who trades eternal youth for his soul. There's this painting of him and he's really hot and young and full of fun and he is kind of vain and he accidentally makes a pact. He never ages and he always looks great um, but meanwhile he becomes a pretty awful person but with every awful thing that he does the picture ages and he doesn't wear a trace of it um, and he starts freaking out. He locks the picture away and with each year the picture is becoming haggard and weird and reflecting his sins and he's also becoming kind of 
unhinged. I did just find it like really, really juicy. Some pretty stunning lines, some pretty stunning reflections on youth. The only issue is that Lord Henry, who's one of the main characters, that man can waffle. So that's, I'm just gonna warn you of that. I think that's kind of the point of him, but still. Just notes, just notes for Oscar Wilde in case he wants to edit or something, I don't know. A Very Old Man with Enormous Wings by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is my first book by this author and it's literally like 15 pages long, but I just wanted to dip my toe in because it's magical realism, which is, it's kind of fantasy magic, but set in the real world. And it's about a family who finds a very old man with enormous wings in their garden one night after a storm and it's kind of the community's response to him and how quite quickly people just <laughs> start to exploit him and obviously like as it sounds there are it's a big metaphor and there are lots of metaphors and hidden meanings um, around human behavior and like community behavior and like how quickly you strip people of humanity. Sorry, I'm becoming more and more conscious of my voice. I feel like it really is about to go. I feel like this is a really good warm up for 100 Years of Solitude, um, which is absolutely on my TBR. I'll probably do a long vlog reading that book, to be honest. Finally, Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. This is a fictional story um, set in a flat in London. A husband has just lost his wife and he's got two sons. And very soon after her death, as they are absolutely in the bottom the bottom of their grief hole. The flat and like they are visited by a crow who's kind of helpful, kind of not. He's like a Nanny McPhee crow for grief. He's there to help them but he's also pretty sneaky and pretty silly and a bit sarcastic. This book kind of wasn't what I expected um, in that I just like enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I really recommend it for anyone like whether you're a griever or whether you just want to learn about grief because it had some really good kind of you know all grief is unique and stuff, but I do think it had some really good messages about grief and what and the reality of it. Like it's just a very thoughtful book in a kind of funky package with a very interesting structure. Each chapter, like the chapters are incredibly short. They weren't really chapters, I guess, like each piece of writing. It's from like the crow's point of view or it's focusing on the father or the sons. The sons are written together, so like they, they aren't individual, which is quite interesting. I think it kind of shows that the book is like from the dad's point of view as opposed to from all of their points of views equally. Anyway, it really read like poems. Each little portion you could see like could have been written as individual poems on grief with their own little mini message and their own rhythm. And then you had things like repeating sentence structures that I thought was really cool. In case it isn't obvious, it is a little bit abstract. So expect that. Before I cannot speak a word more, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a lovely week. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.